Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you are all well. I'm good too. Alhamdulillah. Okay, so it is the last episode of the series and uh, I'm very happy that it all went well. Alhamdulillah. I hope you enjoyed it. And so today this episode is very special because um, it is with someone it, it is with someone who has been there since the start of Peacemakers Pakistani who has been there appreciating my dreams and goals and my intentions for the whole change and Uh, he has been there to encourage me to push me to do it and to pursue all my dreams and my ideas and he just stood there and guiding me advising me and just supporting me so his name is uh, um Qasim Ahmed Ibrahim he is an architect he has passion for teaching and he has been teaching at NCA National College of Arts for around 18 years he is a painter musicologist and he plays sitar i hope a lot of you know him If you don't, I hope you are encouraged to know about him. His love story with the horror is almost half a century long, and this is one of the reasons that why I have invited him to talk about the Lahore is the true Lahore of Lahore. What, how do we define them? What do we know about them? And what he has to share on it? And because of his storytelling. I just wanted him to be on this episode in this in this series, and this is a topic that he has chosen. And I hope you enjoy it. And to show your feedback, I hope I hope it is something that you can relate to well. Enjoy the episode and do share your feedback. Assalamualaikum, sir. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? And how's life going? I am perfectly okay. It is such a I'm extremely thankful for this opportunity that you are giving me. to share my thoughts on the development of my city and the people that i have i'm so fond of well my pleasure it's an honor that you are having that i'm having you on my show because uh, i used to discuss my uh, projects with you and i just i remember that i shared with you and i asked you that these are the topics that i'm working on do you think something is missing and you were like lahori we are we are the lahori of Lahore, and I was like, "Yeah, how can I miss them?" And then I asked you, "Can you present on it?" And you were like, "Sure." <laughs> and I'm so glad that you are here finally. And this is the last episode of this series, so so glad that you are going to do it. Let's dive into it and share what you have to share about the horrors of Lahore, the people of Lahore. <laughs> the people of Lahore. Yes, I think to really uh, understand Lahores. it's very important to really understand where are we coming from and uh, and if uh, you allow me i can take you back at least a thousand years and see that uh, a beautiful small town or a village by the side of a beautiful river which is known as ravi so the entire romanticism of this land which is ravi and uh, the areas adjacent to this river which is very fertile of crops people are harvesting and uh, agriculture is is the way of life and you have abundance of uh, you can there is fish there is a lot of water and so all this natural gifts that this land has are being celebrated uh, to the maximum and so if you look at now the lifestyle of these people the once and one can see that how a uh, leisure leisurely lifestyle that they would be living because there was so much prosperity and there was so much being uh, uh grown so much being harvested all around them so abundance of food and abundance of everything so that is i think the reason why all the invaders who came to the subcontinent they passed through lahore and uh, obviously they were just sitting with all the wealth they could and they could offer so i think this whole uh, phenomena of being raided over and over and over again over centuries and centuries i think that has got a lot to do with the kind of uh, temperament as the people of the city has and how do they get uh, this temperament because uh, this whole uh, concept of uh, being raided being invaded being looted over and over again so the temperament developed over the years that uh, 
look, we cannot keep on fighting them. We need to have a resolve in a way that uh, there has to be an attitude, there has to be an approach of peaceful coexistence. And uh, so that is what they tried to do. So making peace with all the invaders, perhaps, and offering them so whatever they had. And uh, this peaceful uh, coexistence was their, was their defense mechanism. That uh, So whoever came, they just offered them, okay, come and have food with us. Then. If you're here, we're not going to fight you. So, and that is perhaps this kind of uh, laid back, giving in uh, kind of an attitude where you're really not fighting, you're not ready to fight. You're all the, all the time trying to appease somebody in a certain way, in a kind of a celebratory way, so that he lives and he let you live. And so you can just, so I think that is the kind of attitude you can just see the basis or the foundations of the Lahori is how we have been through these thousands of years. And uh, you can see that, uh, and the moment when you do start doing this and you start uh, uh, compromising, you start uh, finding solutions, less finding peaceful solutions, you do get away with a lot of, uh, uh, get away with or get less of bloodshed but there is still a lot of hurt that you feel inside. Obviously, you will feel hurt because of the way you're treated. And I think that when you, over the years that when this, uh, the people have internalized this hurt and they have converted this whole thing into humor. And that is, I think, the essence where the humor of Lahori has come out. Because uh, just imagine a 2000 years uh, from this event, which is now perhaps, and you look at uh, a minivan who is just going on the jail road or on the mall road, and you can see is a beautiful white minivan, and there is written in Punjabi, and you can see it's written that Tusi lang jao sadi khare, and you see you look at this Tusi lang jao sadi khare, and now you take this expression back two thousand years ago where the invaders are coming. So how do you treat them? Do you say, I'm going to fight you? You cannot come. So if you have this kind of a attitude, you see, lang jau chalo, you see, kha jau jau khaan hai saada, you see, jau peen hai pee jau, you see, majja ngaba lai jau, then jau, then apna kaam karo. Then wapsi te ande jana si cha kuch lamang de toh. So this is the kind of, I think, the attitude that developed over, over years and years. So that is why you need to, I think that the very concept of uh, winning hearts and minds, I think that is where it started because they had to win hearts, they had to share. So that is why the sharing is so much in our genes. There's so much sharing of food, so much sharing of space. So all this, uh, I think, adds up to what we uh, see this. And uh, because of this, actually, if you compare Lahore, the history of Lahore with Delhi, with the uh, with even Gujranawala and all these areas, we see that the amount of bloodshed that happened in Delhi and in the other areas, Lahore actually received a lot lesser than these kind of bloodshed events, if you scroll, scroll through the history. And perhaps that is again the reason that uh, not I don't think so that uh, one can find massacres as one finds elsewhere in the subcontinent in Lahore. Yes, there were events with the Sikhs when uh, uh, in the reign of Aurangzeb Alamgir, yes, they were. But I think generally, if I look at the last 1500 years of history, 2000 years of history, so I don't see that uh, happening much. And uh, so that is how it is. So to, to laugh at all the adversities and to laugh at, to be able to have this courage to laugh at uh, the kind of fate, the kind of uh, adverse uh, events that this fate gives you. I think that is where the roots of this particular Lahori, being a Lahori comes. And uh, then you have all the four seasons, different weather, proper 
uh, autumn and uh, winters and summers and spring. So obviously this brings a lot of emotion. And when you have uh, there's so much uh, emotional uh, flavor, there's so much color that involves in our lives because the environment is such. You have such distinct weathers that contributes to your thinking, contributes to your uh, way of life. So all these things uh, happen in this particular fashion. So I have to sum it uh, in a certain way that as uh, Lord Byron once said that uh, I laugh so that I may not weep. Perhaps this defines, I think it's a very beautiful line by Lord Byron that I laugh so that I may not weep. So that is how they have negotiated the diversities of history. And uh, so all the time really uh, confronting and negotiating with the kings who used to came or the Ghaznavis and the Ghauris. So that is why this particular phrase, Lahori Bacha, because uh, now the attitude is that uh, everybody here is a Bacha. The rickshawala is a bacha, the tongiwala is a bacha, the cycle wala, everybody is a bacha. So, and that is how we address each other also. How bacha, betho, poor bacha, ju, kia ale. So, this is again. So, now this is look what subtle commentary there it is behind this word. Because you have an invader who is the king. And uh, you're calling each, everybody is calling each other a king. So, that is the way to diffuse <laughs> what is being offered to you. And this becomes that symbol. And uh, then comes that uh, the other thing is that uh, since it was an agriculture based society and uh, in agriculture, you know, that uh, there's a certain time of the year when you do the harvest, when you get your crops, when you cut it and when you sell it. So you don't have ready cash available all around every day of the year. So there's certain time then you, when you sell your crops and you have this uh, cash in your hand. So in, in order to live and in order to maintain your livelihoods, there's a lot of credit that you're doing. So you're bringing a lot of things on credit. And once uh, uh, you have your, uh, uh, you, you earn money through your agriculture, that is the time to pay back the people. So there is this trust and credit system in uh, the, all the agriculture-based societies. So now we combine that trust and that the credit uh, that you can just take up things. You can go to some, uh, uh, you do your groceries, you go there, you bring everything, but you don't pay and you have it with you. And then you pay it after a certain time. So this then combined with being the victim of the history. So it brings people together. So when you go to uh, uh, originally, when I talk about the walled cities, because when I talk about Lahori, I'm actually talking about the city, the inner city. And obviously this particular character of people, which has developed over the th over thousands of years, it has echoed all around over to, to the periphery, to the satellite areas like defense and so on and so forth. But the core is still there. The core is in the areas of the inner city that we see. And uh, so this particular concept of uh, going to a shop and then asking for something for atta, for dal and chini and not paying. So that also had that also developed relationships between people. So as you see that if you go to a grocery store now, if you go to Al Fateh or any Jalal Sons or Carrefour or whatever, can you even imagine that you can just go there and just pick up stuff and leave? Because it's business now. It's not relationship. So this is one of the most important things that uh, that is why now when we go to a walled city and uh, or if I go back at least 30 years or 20, 25, 30 years and if you go to a shop and you try to pay, the shopkeeper will immediately ask you, Ji, anna bhi ki ho gaya? Ji. 
So what did he say? Ke anna bhi etabar nahi aega, which means that don't you trust me? So it's very interesting now phenomena that why in this particular transaction, the shopkeeper needs, needs to trust the person who is taking his, who's buying stuff. Here he's asking him to trust the seller. It's entirely the opposite. So actually he's asking, don't you trust me that I trust you so much? You see how beautiful this whole relationship is that you need to trust me that I trust you so that you will give me back, uh, you will pay me eventually. So this is such a beautiful relationship and that is the core of Lahori people and that is where this the whole phenomena of Lahore and the Lahoris come from that this is the absolute level of sharing that happens between these people. So I think that is something which is very, uh, very interesting that they do the share. And uh, now you put all this, uh, the sharing and the, the way the humor happens, everything. And uh, so now you put, now you bring architecture into it as well. So now what, how is architecture helping this whole <coughs> phenomena of, uh, very unique type of social uh, <clears throat> interaction. So uh, you have uh, walled city houses where these are uh, three to four story houses where all the roofs are <clears throat> connected to each other. And uh, for example, if you g get up on a rooftop in uh, Bhati area, you can actually come down from the roof in the Lohari area. You can keep on jumping on the all entire areas. So you can just see that what amazing life is happening with all this kind of background. Now you have a rooftop where it's all connected and people are actually jumping on top of each other's roofs. And so what, for example, in uh, you see how it develops the care and the relationship and the respect develops that in summers or everybody is sleeping on the roof. So there are women, your sister, your mother, everybody's there. And so that is why it's a very old Punjabi or Lahori saying that Mama Tiya Sanji Aundiyane. Oji Galiyam Aliyanj Mama Tiya Sanji Aundiyane. That your sister is like my sister because it's like an open bedroom. It's like a huge open bedroom. Everybody's sleeping there. So unless or until there is a level of trust, the level of respect between uh, people. So that is, I think, the core where it is that when they say this, uh, and then when you look at it, uh, and then Basant, look at the festivity. So the other thing is that uh, one is forget and forgive the humor and then festivity. That is the third thing that is one of the most important things in, uh, in our culture. And is that uh, the entire, now you have this kite flying festival and everybody's there and they're trying to cut each other's strings and then celebrate with dolls and everything with drums. And uh, now you see this, the character that has happened and this is kind of a fearless character. And if you can, if I can relate to a 1965 war with India, and there was dog fight. You, there used to be dog fights happening right on top of Lahore city, where the Indian Nats were attacking us, and there were F-86 sabers who were actually engaged in dog fights with them. And can you imagine the entire Lahore was on their rooftop watching this dog fight and exactly responding as they would respond in so it's it's very interesting that is how we are and you see the paf pilots had had difficulty because when the aircrafts are going down they have to when they have to put on their machine guns there were people standing downstairs they could get hurt but there they, they were actually <laughs> standing there and jumping and cheering them up and in uh, Basant, when you're flying a kite, you see this, the kite is made up of this paper and this uh, bamboo shoot. And uh, it's very stiff in the beginning. So you actually bend it many times so it becomes flexible. So when, when you fly it, 
because of this flexibility it flies in a better way so that is known as uh, punjabi and annu kehnde ne chabak adi chak kaddo ji so the thing is that uh, when you do this adi tusi kehnde ho ki ji chak kat ke le aao means that uh, your to your flight your kite is not flying well it's it, it's it's seriously very boring so go and do this adi chak kaddo to fer udao to fer assi peche la aao so when the indian planes were flying the lahoris were saying to the indian planes that go and adi chak kat ke le aao ji ye maza hi nahi aa rahi hai sir that you take your planes back put the wings in the right slaughter so that we can enjoy this dog fight you're not even up to the mark to our planes so this is the attitude of lorry <laughs> if you i mean this is such an interesting uh, and uh, thing so this whole concept of connected roofs the overlapping of lives the overlapping of spaces interlocking spaces and then uh, multifunctional spaces so look at how architecture is playing now with this kind of uh, uh thing that uh, all this is happening in this particular way and uh, so uh, i think that uh, everybody knowing everybody and uh, because the houses were so connected with each other that uh, if you have to go to a third house you actually enter into one house go into the other house and then climb on top of the rooftop so you need to know if you're sitting in your house and there are few small boys running around you know that they are neighbors sons or daughters or something so this was kind of ownership they would see that they are safe they they knew each other so so well so lives were being shared they knew everything so this is again a very typical lahori culture they would like to know everything what is happening in your life so you know, my father actually is is a doctor and he practices in the near mayo hospital so it's kind of the same uh, uh, wall city it's not entirely the wall city but uh, the old city and uh, he has been practicing there since 40 years so and he decided one day that uh, okay I've, it's quite enough so I'll, let me take my tuesdays off so that i can just do something else so he wrote this placard that on tuesday evening dr sa would not be in the clinic and now we have all these wall city people around him so everybody would come to him and ask in a very lower tone that dr sa the so to say tuesday nu kithe jande ho <laughs> so as if he has something very <laughs> uh his extremely personal he is something doing something very fishy fishy so now <laughs> and since they uh, he they everybody owns him so they need to know what is happening where is the doctor going go to <laughs> so this is the kind of uh, the relationship that uh, people have with each other and then this is the acceptability of this entire social diversity we see that uh, for example uh, all the people uh, like uh, lrgpt uh, the community people who would dance who would sing and they were so acceptable in that lahori culture they knew that uh, they are people they have uh, there's something happened to them it is by the fate so they are like this so they were not outcasted so on every child birth they would call them to dance and so that is why and it was used to be that ke oh ji bada maza kita ji khusre bhi nachaya si oh bade paise ji ditte khusre nu so this is they are so they would come the these eunuchs will come they would be given food so it's a very interesting to see ke what kind of egalitarian or uh, uh, secular society it was that acceptability even in uh, uh ramzan the week all the streets were laden with fruits and they would uh, they would be the iftaris would be free not now as everything is so expensive in ramzan and like in uh, if you see the typical lahori culture the mohar in muharram processions the entire streets were laden with people who would be all the sunnis would be uh, actually giving them these uh, something to drink and the processions of the 
the earlier the she would go right in front of them so they would be there as their helpers so that is the real tradition of lahore the acceptability the open heartedness uh, the humor and so these things and then obviously there are the whole uh, 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 disposition or would say the celebration that they have at food because the sulf surplus was always there and they would offer food and since you have your uh, the entire uh, the roofs are joined your every household knows every household so there were a lot of stories to share because the the lives were so shared so that is why and the moment of sharing is when you're eating so that is why lahoris would always their main celebration was collective eating so that is why when you get up in the morning the nashta the breakfast was always in the street people would always call you send out your small child son or daughter they would go into into the market and they will bring the breakfast they will bring the puri chanas or they will bring the siri pai at home so this is all again very festive lahore and food so this is another unbreakable relationship it is said that agga ke ho ji adda lahore khanda hai te adda lahore pakanda hai this is not this there is nothing else that we do either we are cooking or we eat it so why it happens because uh, it is food is collective eating is perhaps one of the most beautiful celebration of sharing and knowing each other's lives and that is how this has always been the medium of the city since uh, they were always uh, well off in a certain way that to to own your livelihood and to uh, do your agriculture it was very difficult because the huge river was with you and uh, the lands were fertile so there was always the surplus of food that was available and uh, since that also so that is why people also become a bit uh, laid back and they would like to uh, sit and uh, spend a lot of time talking to each other and to do that the only place that the urban setting would offer would be that all those thadas all those terraces with areas where the food was being prepared so i think that is where the life would be that talking about people about politics about uh, whatever uh, so that is and uh, there's another the tradition the reason why they would uh, actually <clears throat> start a conversation with the stranger would be that the moment you're sitting at a place and there is a stranger sitting by beside you and you're immediately when they will bring you food you're going to immediately offer some person who's on your right side on your left side and this is known, known as sula marna okay the moment i'll get a food i'll say oh ji fir shuru karo but if i don't even know you at all mera khana aaya hai so i will just ask the word le ji shuru kare na zara so the person will say okay nahi ji mehrbani ki tusi mera aa reha hai nahi nahi jo ek nimala te le hona shuru te karo that means that i trust you so much and i feel that we are together we are equal so that is why i can share for so this kind of equality the concept that is where the relationships are it's always horizontal they're not linear so in that is i, th- I think how i define people and their relationships that they, they these are horizontal relationships which means that it is based on equality it is based on trust and uh, so that is uh, why this whole concept of uh, and you know uh, when the ghaznavis and uh, the gauris would be uh, doing all their expeditions or they are actually they will be coming attacking them and uh, all the time that lahore was subjected to all this uh, adventurism by these people uh, and these uh, the people who were uh, from the up north they were mainly meat eaters and uh, they would eat the flesh the muscles but they will always leave out uh, the siri and the pie and the kidneys or so and so forth 
So, so that is what they used to do. That the rulers would always eat the kind of portions of meat they liked, and the rest they would just throw towards the locals who who they were ruling. And I think that is from where the tradition of uh, because that is the only thing they were getting to eat. So, so they made the pies and the cities so. Uh, tasteful, and they experimented with the recipes, and that is why we see the takatak and the gurdas and the champes and the siri pai, because uh, in the fate of the events, so those are the areas where the the Afghans would not eat those areas. So I mean, it's very interesting when you relate the the nashtas and the siri pais to the historical events. That uh, where it where is this coming from, and uh, so. that is why i think that uh, this whole concept of sula marna of eating together sharing things and uh, because in wall city whenever somebody was cooking something they would always if i have uh, if there is a lot of sag being cooked in my house i would make small portions and immediately send to to my neighbors so lo lo ji sade ka sag pak gaya the this the neighbors would send something back so i think this particular way of overlapping your lives being equal being uh, uh, equally uh, associated and sharing their grief and so i think that is what lahore is all about and i think the third very important influence on the lahoris is the all the sufi saints that lahore has and hazrat dada ganj baksh we have shah hussain there so so many hazrat data uh uh data darbar mia mir sa so mulla shah so we see that uh, and then so on their urs and on these celebrations they will keep on giving so much food so it it was a very interesting way of uh, this economic circle that would come into action that all these people would be so much uh, uh, they, uh, they would have so much charity so and that is uh, and that charity is now linked with kind of a mystic environment there is kind of a uh, sufi bent of uh, thinking and so it's a very interesting mix between the way they give food to people the way they would spend on the the urs of sufi saints and how this the whole concept of sharing and equality and everything comes and i think last but not least if i have to define this uh, the whole uh, lahori thing is that uh, for example uh, if i ever go <clears throat> to eat firni in wall city immediately the person who's selling it is going to now i am an architect so since my father is a doctor and their entire generations their four five generations have been or for three generations have been uh, uh, patients to our three generations of doctors so when i will i will go for a firni or something they will immediately say oh dr saab dr saab oh ji dr saab and i am an architect i am not a doctor so this is a typical again lahori uh, thing that they will associate you so it's not the firni that i'm eating it is accentuating that relationship of three generations that is being celebrated at that particular point so it's it's, it's different so eating is not food or eating that is where people actually go wrong when they talk about oji oh, lahoris are all about it no they they are all about celebrating traditional relationships and i think that uh, if somebody who comes a milkman comes a dood wala comes and he gives you and i have given him that okay now give me one liter of milk so he will pour me milk and before going he will just give me a bit more more than i i'm i i'm i have asked for you see this extra that he gives you which is even more and above than what you're paying him is what relationship is all about because that is why he is doing it for data or for uh his spirituality or for his mental well being or maintaining a relationship with me 
So I think that slight taking this extra step to maintain this beautiful relationship of equality, of uh, celebration, of uh, people who have been together and who have been facing the Trinity together and people who have been celebrating and overlapping their lives. And this is what actually I think it boils down to. And that is what makes a Lahori a Lahori, that he is about open heartedness. He is about taking you as equal, irrespective of your gender or caste or creed. And it's about uh, the traditional relationships that he has enjoyed. And his celebration is not perhaps music. His celebration is all about the trust that he has with you. So that is why if he's not <clears throat> asking for money, if you are buying anything, that is what he celebrates in his life. You see, I am the king. I am that king who has withstood all those kings who have, uh, have invaded us. And look, I have still have the hand that I'm giving to people. So that is the elation that what Lahori is all about. So this is uh, briefly, I would say, <laughs> just my personal opinion of, I'm sure that this uh, species that you call Lahori has, is so diverse and has so many other connotations. There's so many other explanations to the character, the attitude, the, the love that we have for our fellow beings. So this is perhaps just my uh, small interpretation of uh, how things might have developed. Okay, great. Might have developed. Okay, great. Uh, okay, so before uh, moving on to the feedback to this whole conversation, something that just clicked to my mind because I'm a Lahori and I have a good sense of humor. How are you feeling? Because this is the first time that I have kept silence <laughs> throughout your talking. How are you ah. feeling? Okay. If, if I am a Lahori, I will ask you, <laughs> Because I remember you used to tell me, let me speak. <laughs> I, whenever we are together and you are always mentioning me, let me speak, let me finish, then ask hmm. me first. <laughs> so yeah. I just, I was just thinking that he has been talking for the past few hours and we are like, I'm like, I'm silent. <laughs> okay. So now it's my time to speak. Okay. Yes, so thank do. you so much. Yes. I just love your take because first of all, I was looking forward to this session with you because I love the way you tell stories. This is your this is your spark and this is what keeps me bringing back to you because I love the way you tell stories and you instill your perception into mine. Of course, I have my opinions, but still I appreciate the way you present your opinion and I get the only thing that comes from my mind is just respect his opinion because it's coming from from his roots, from his heart. So thank you so much for sharing your deepest opinion with us. And secondly, exactly this is what i was looking forward to because this is what i wanted to know from someone who has seen generations uh, of lahore in lahore and who has made uh, who has reflected upon it and the way you were mentioning uh, the lahori uh, the concept of lahore okay so there is something that might come as a conflict or as a backlash that you are not involving the people who are living in Lahore, but living in the new societies, maybe. Why are you just mentioning and highlighting Lahoris as people of inner city? This is something that we we might hear, okay. and this is something that comes to our mind. But my take on this will be, my support for your presentation or for your talk would be that Lahore is basically what was it used to be. The further is the extension of it. Like if even from the people when they come from all Lahore to new cities, I have seen great changes in the entire society or the entire circle that um, that spreads from the people from the person who was used to be the Lahori or who used to be living in the old city. The perfect example is my grandfather of it, <laughs> and all the things you were mentioning 
I have seen him doing everything. He was uh, he had migrated from India to Lahore, and he has those energies in because he says that I have seen that part of life. I have seen that part of uh, that struggle. I can face anything. And he has he was someone who used to say to doctor on his face, "Tu ko na hota hai, mujhe zada pata hai." He he was telling him rest. You are you just got a heart attack, and he was roaming around. Uh, in the ward, and he was asking people to see Sayyoo, <laughs> and people were reminding him, "Ah, today, today, you have been up for operation. Why are you sitting in your own place?" And he was like, "This is a lot." So this is, is what his energy was. The resilience I have seen in him, uh, I don't think so that I have ever seen in any other human being. And also that he used to say that, "Happy to do it. Whatever you do, happy to do it. Happy to do it." कुछ नहीं होता दूसरों की फिक्र ना करो चीजें बेहतर हो जाती हैं लाइक ही हैज दैट एनर्जी एंड आई आई वाज टोल्ड लेटर ऑन दैट डॉक्टर हैज टोल्ड हिम दैट ही वांट बी एबल टू सरवाइव मोर देन फ्यू इयर्स एंड ही लिव माशाल्लाह फॉर 20 इयर्स जस्ट बिकॉज़ ऑफ हिज स्ट्रेंथ एंड हिज रेजिलिएंस एंड हिज माइंडसेट दैट अल्लाह नोस बेटर यू नो दैट स्ट्रेंथ आई वाज आई हैवंट सीन एनीवन एज लिविंग इन द न्यू साइड ऑफ द हॉट माय अदर फैमिली मेंबर्स बट in him i have seen a lot because he has faced the real struggle and he has he has seen how allah has kept him alive and through and have been protecting him throughout his life and then he has the he had the strong emotional connection with the people while he was living in the inner city of lahore and uh, the culture that you have just mentioned the festivities and the food sharing and how people were so concerned about him when he was living there you know and then he moved to the new new side of lahore he missed those people but the vibe he had in him it has transformed the life of people around him they started sharing they started talking they started sharing uh, emotional support so i just uh, loved how a lahori a true lahori can influence the people living in lahore in other side of city this is my take on it and yes now i'm going so to ask can i answer this uh, this uh, yeah. question that why particularly i chose the university the reason is that that is the area which is there since at least a thousand years mm-hmm. so dha has not been there since i don't yeah. think so even uh, 40 years perhaps maximum is the lifespan of the new settlements in lahore so when we look at a city we always start from the core of that area because that is where the traditions are and that is over the centuries we see the development the connected development and uh, the way now the finally the cities expand yes there is still that character of that particular lahori that you will find uh though very little but it is still be kind of uh, overflowed into these new settlements that we see because if i see a person from lahore uh, for example dhas i do think that they are still slightly different from somebody living in dh karachi or islamabad perhaps in their posh areas because there is this still this uh, influence because even people who are in new modern developments still visit the old city they still eat sit on the thadas and eat they still like uh, halwa puri is off the wall city they go to this kuku restaurant and they go to haveli and they enjoy this beautiful view of badshahi masjid and the traditional food so there is this there is still that connection so i think that as far as that connection is there the concept of that we both even if we don't know each other we can still sit on the same table and eat and share our food so that will persist so there's always an area where the characteristics is in its full uh taste and celebration which is the core and then it slightly dilutes itself the way you go to the periphery Yes, I agree. So the take is that uh, the soul of Lahori's or the core values of Lahori's are the generosity, the open-heartedness that brings an acceptance for all, an acceptance for self. Then the sharing, of course, the sharing part that they have the generosity and they have the giving 
mentality and the giving soul in them and then they have the forgiving and forgetfulness which is import, very important for being a human a good human and for well being of course so these are the areas that and yes the dependence on uh, on the keeping up the binding relationships you know keeping relationships intact this is their core these are their core values the trust generosity sharing caring and being there for others amazing this is exactly. yes this is the whole uh, moral of the story this is the whole uh, idea of lahori is and i agree to it thank you so much sir thank you so much for your time it was an amazing talk i loved your storytelling as always so i hope people enjoy it too and do you have anything else to say at the end do you want to appreciate me i think that i've always been uh, greatly inspired by you because i think you i feel that you are a true lahori because right from your thesis your only and only uh, uh, aim is to really go back to people to make all those uh, spaces functional to go into public spaces where people are there they were sitting together they might not be knowing each other but there's still a relationship i think so the place making uh, that you're doing is all about the concept of being lahori yeah because that is what they do yeah it's that comes naturally that are are you related or are you friends with somebody it's important that can you coexist in a third space yeah can you coexist in a certain way that you can share your food you can celebrate somebody with somebody without knowing him completely and thus making this society a more livable place a more place of acceptability to all kinds of people so i think that what your work is completely in line and tune with the whole concept that this city stands for since thousands of years yeah that's why it comes that's really to me indeed yes. it comes that's really to me and you as well i know that <laughs> absolutely absolutely thank you so much and we need to continue to go and touch the lives of people it's yeah. change their lives for the better and uh, create this horizontal relationships of equality which is very important because uh, nobody is the boss here everybody is in the process so the journey in itself is the final destination so there is no final destination eventually the journey that we are experiencing is the final destination amazing yep. exactly. thank you so much for your support as always uh, and i'm just so happy right now thank you so much for your time thank i hope you very take much. care of yourself allah hafiz allah hafiz so thankful to you thank you very much khuda hafiz allah hafiz